When Hermosafe Barrio was originally founded, the idea was, the first request actually came from the Department of Education and it wasn't about a museum, it was to make, to write and create curriculum for students in East Harlem who didn't have any curriculum used in their school that was about their own history and culture. So the person who was approached was an artist who was teaching in the public school system at the time, Rafael Montañez Ortiz, who also had a PhD in arts education from Columbia University. And he said, you know what, instead of um, just creating the curriculum for the students, which is really important, we should do that, he said, let's create a museum. So the first museum was in a classroom in one of the public mm -hmm. schools on the west side, actually, not in East Harlem. Yeah. And then it moved to a few places and settled in. And the mission was to, at the very beginning, was to feature the art and culture of, especially visual art, of Puerto Ricans. Well, so that shift came really early in the history of the museum. And so I think part of the idea was, I mean, I was little then, so I don't know <laughs> directly, but I, I, I can imagine that part of the idea that the director and other administrators at that time were thinking about was, it's always important to think about context, like a larger context. So if you think about, let's just take as an example, Puerto Rican print and poster making from the 1960s has a real affinity with, Puerto, with uh, poster making from the 60s and 70s in Cuba and the 60s and 70s among Chicano groups in California. Mm -hmm. That's just one example. Yeah. So when you think about um, looking at art in a larger context, I think you have a more kind of enriched experience of it. Mm -hmm. We can see, in fact, eventually we, the, the museum did a show that compared Puerto Rican posters from the 60s and 70s to West Coast, California, Mexican-American made posters from mm -hmm. the same period because many of the political um, statements were similar and many of the ways of working, the materials and, and the techniques used were also mm -hmm. very similar. Um, and so that, I think, helps people see how it's an American art mm -hmm. movement that's maybe not always acknowledged as American art, you know? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people still forget that Puerto Rico is part of the United States. Yeah. So everything that's being created there is part of a contemporary history of American art. Mm -hmm. But I think probably the idea of expanding that mission was about seeing artwork in, in a broader context and also early on seeing how there were other immigrants moving to New York. There were already Cubans living in East Harlem already mm -hmm. in the 50s also. You know, and certainly after 1959 a lot of more of them came, not as many as Florida of course. Yeah. But you know, there were many here in New York and then already by the 60s Dominicans were Imagine after living 30 years of dictatorship, many of them were trying to escape the Dominican Republic and live here also. Mm -hmm. So early on, these migrations started happening, and, and that, I think, influenced wisely the way that the museum developed its programming. Mm -hmm. I think it's an important balance that we strike between something like exhibitions and the programs that go with them. So a really good example is and something that maybe people don't know, the museum's mission expanded really quickly after it was founded. Already by 1972, there was an interest. It was founded in 69, right? Very late 1969. Already by 1972, um, other voices who were in the administration thought that the museum's mission should expand to other Latin American countries. I think a lot of people think that that happened later, but it happened really early. Mm -hmm. And. So already there was a, a vision that was about going beyond Puerto Rico um, and looking even at the situation of New Yorkans in New York, which wasn't in the original, original mission statement either. Mm -hmm. um, and so that expanded early on. And so the way we've continued, I think, to support that expansion of the mission is to focus on important figures in the history of Latin American art. And we dovetailed that with other smaller presentations of Latino art, art, artists working in the United States. And then in our public programming, we've continued to keep um, talking about issues that are important to the community. But at the core of everything still is Puerto Rico. Our collection is mostly by Puerto Rican artists. And so when we do a permanent collection exhibition, the 
the majority of the artists who are in that sh show are Puerto Rican artists. Mm -hmm. When we do group exhibitions, we make sure that we have a good representation of young, living, emerging, or mid-career, or older Puerto Rican artists who are represented in the exhibition. You know, this show that's up right now, for example, mm -hmm. we didn't organize that. And the show just before this, Marisol, that was a traveling exhibition. Mm -hmm. So we have a mix, but like the next three shows that are opening in the summer, we organized all of those. And mm -hmm. we're organizing one for next fall. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is such a thing as Latino art. I think there's contemporary art that's made by artists, some of whom consider themselves Latinos, some of them don't. And it doesn't have a specific look to it. Um, the best artists are making work that answers for them an important question mm -hmm. or makes a statement. It has something to say. And it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with nationality or ethnicity um, or race, but often it does. Mm -hmm. But those things don't always have to go together. Sometimes they're interested in exploring race or gender or class outside of, an, of, of a national identity. So they may think of, you know, I think that you can't really define, I think the best way to think about it is to define it really as contemporary art made by artists living in the United States. Um, some of them define themselves as Latinos, others don't. Mm -hmm. Some artists don't want to be in exhibitions that are about Latino art or have Latino art in the title because they don't want to be marked as being as having a specific mm -hmm. aesthetic. You know? And for some artists who do conceptual work, you wouldn't be able to say where the artist mm -hmm. is from, right? Yeah. And I find that that's true.